Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. And make sure to stick until the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have 2 to the power of x plus 2 to the power of x plus 1 plus 2 to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 7. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of x plus 1, we can rewrite as 2 to the power of x times 2 to the power of 1. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m minus n, this is equal to a to the power of m over a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of x minus 1, we can rewrite as 2 to the power of x over 2 to the power of 1. Now, if I factor out 2 to the power of x from my left-hand side here, I get 2 to the power of x times 1 plus 2 plus 1 over 2. Now, this is equal to 7. Now, 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3 plus 1 half, that's going to be 7, up, 7 over 2. So now I have 2 to the power of x times 7 over 2 is equal to 7. Now, if I multiply by 2 on both sides, these two can cancel out. So I'd be left with 2 to the power of x times 7 is equal to 14. Now, if I divide by 7 on both sides, these two cancel out. Now I'm left with 2 to the power of x is equal to 2. And 2 here, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 1. If I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, then this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, x is equal to 1. All right, so I have 500 to the power of 500 over 250 to the power of 250. Now 500, we could rewrite this as 250 plus 250. Now I have this over 250 to the power of 250. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 500 to the power of 250 plus 250, that's going to equal 500 to the power of 250 times 500 to the power of 250. Now I have this over 250 to the power of 250. Now I can rewrite this as 500 to the power of 250 times 500 to the power of 250 over 250 to the power of 250. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a, or sorry, if I have something over a to the power of m over b to the power of m, this is equal to a over b to the power of m. So 500 to the power of 250 over 250 to the power of 250, that's going to equal 500 over 250 to the power of 250. Now 500 over 250, that's simply equal to 2. So now I have 500 to the power of 250 times 2 to the power of 250. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So 500 to the power of 250 times 2 to the power of 250, it's going to equal 500 to the power of 200. Sorry, sorry. If I have something in the form a to the power of m times b to the power of m, this is equal to a times b to the power of m. So 500 to the power of 250 times 2 to the power of 50, this is going to equal 500 times 2 to the power of 250. 500 times 2 is 1,000, 
So now I have 1,000 to the power of 250. And we can actually simplify this. 1,000, this is equal to 10 to the power of 3. So now I have 10 to the power of 3 to the power of 250. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 10 to the power of 3 to the power of 250 this is going to equal 10 to the power of 3 times 250, which is equal to 10 to the power of 750. So this is my answer. All right, so I have 3 to the power of x squared over 9 to the power of x is equal to 81. Now, first off, 9 here, this is equal to 3 to the power of 2. So if I replace 9 with 3 to the power of 2, I get 3 to the power of x squared over 3 to the power of 2 to the power of x is equal to 81. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 3 to the power of 2 to the power of x, that's going to equal 3 to the power of 2 times x, which is the same thing as 2x. Now this is equal to 81. Now as you can see here, both of our bases here are 3. So I'm actually going to want to change 81 to something to the base of 3 now. Meaning 81, this is equal to 3 to the power of what? Or 3 to the power of x. Well, 3 to the power of 1, this is equal to 3. 3 to the power of 2, this is equal to 9. 3 to the power of 3, this is equal to 27. 3 to the power of 4, this is equal to 81. So, meaning I'm going to change 81 to 3 to the power of 4. And now, all our terms have a base of 3. So now, this is pretty simple solve. So first off, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So 3 to the power of x squared over 3 to the power of 2x, it's going to equal 3 to the power of x squared minus 2x. Now this is equal to 3 to the power of 4. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, x squared minus 2x is equal to 4. Now to solve this, all I have to do is subtract 4 on both sides, so then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x squared minus 2x minus 4 is equal to 0. Now, to solve this equation, I'm going to be using the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 2, and c is equal to negative 4. So if I plug these values in, I get negative negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 4 all over 2a, so 2 times 1. Now negative and negative 2 is positive 2. So I have positive 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared is positive 4. Minus 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. All over 2 times 1 is 2. That's equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 20 over 2. And now the square root of 20, well 20, this can be simplified into 10 times 2. 10, this can be simplified into 5 times 2. So 2 is going to be my outside number and 5 is going to be my inside number. It's going to be 2 plus or minus 2 root 5 over 2. Now if I divide this by 2, I get 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. Because 2 divided by 2 is 1, and these will cancel out. So my two solutions are 1 plus the square root of 5, and 1 minus the square root of 5. 